What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Yellow Cab's favorite nerd, and today we are talking about our second-to-last big convention of the year for collectibles, and that is NYCC. And I got news for you. I wasn't overly impressed with the reveals, but let's go through a few that are kind of noteworthy. We'll start with McFarlane. And look, I just want to go out on a limb and say I'm generally not impressed. I had kind of high hopes for these Mortal Kombat figures. I just recently saw the Sub-Zero in hand recently. No. No, you won't be getting me, sir. Sorry. And the Scorpion looks maybe just as bad. It's just, they're just not up to snuff. I just can't. I can't with these. I don't care for them. Uh, No, thank you. Which is a bummer because I was hoping not only that this would be indicative of a solid Mortal Kombat line that I could kind of support my Storm line with, but also it gave me some high hopes for the upcoming DC stuff from McFarlane. And now I'm not having good feels there either. So that's a bit of a bummer kind of across the board. I then kind of want to move on to this movie realization stuff from Bondi. I didn't get into this line and it it might be one of my biggest regrets. It's just a really sharp and beautiful line, but they had some new reveals here. They showed more of the Kylo Ren, which we have seen before, I believe. But then they also showed an IG-88, which looks so cool. I'm just always impressed how they're able to kind of incorporate this samurai design into the Star Wars aesthetic and how it always seems to work, but maybe not quite as impressive as their Akbar, who just looks so cool to me. They're just like two characters I would have never seen as part of this line, and yet here they are, and they both work magnificently. I'm just really taken back by it. And then they also showed their upcoming vehicle, Voltron, which I did pass on. But I'm sure it looks good, and I'm sure those people that are into that will be happy with it. Moving on to DC Collectibles, it looks like they're doing this little line of statues. I don't know. I don't have very high hopes, but they do look pretty cool. I mean, for what they are, the Catwoman in particular, grabs me, but I doubt that they'll be well made enough to kind of justify the purchase. And then they showed, uh, you know, a few figures and it's not that any of them necessarily look bad. It's just that I've gone down this road with them before and I just feel like they have a tendency not to hold up. They just, they don't have a firm grip on what it takes to make a successful figure. And I can't blame them. It's not like it's their kind of bread and butter. You know, it's one of those jack of all trades, master of none situations. But I tell you what, they do know how to sculpt and they do know how to paint. It's just the actual engineering and build of a figure that they don't quite have down pat yet. And at this point, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not sure that they that they ever will. Moving on to SH Figuarts, we got some Marvel stuff, which I'm kind of, I'm not going to be buying every rendition of all these characters, but the Captain America does look cool. They showed off more pictures of their M. Bison, which looks good, and also their Sagat. So they're really kind of fleshing out the villains line. Like, uh, they're almost there, you know, they put out a Balrog and we should pretty much be in service. But I'm, I'm happy to see this line kind of continuing. I'm hoping to see an E-Honda soon. That's kind of the one as Angief, but I'm really happy with the direction it's going. Their Vega was quite nice. And then we got Mezco, uh, Mezco, 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 which is an interesting company to me and a company kind of worth following, but I'm just not sure if the nuts and bolts of it will ever work for me. But their Black Mask figure looks very cool. Once again, this, the soft goods to me don't really work in the scale and it doesn't really show off in terms of weight and suspension of disbelief and all those things kind of fall flat for me, but it does look good. They also showed off a Batman that looks really good. A Wonder Woman, this kind of Amazon warrior one, as well as the classic Wonder Woman, and both look good. I have a soft spot for Wonder Woman, so I might be tempted to go in on one of those eventually, but we'll see. And I feel like most of the other stuff we've seen, Mezco has a reputation of kind of showing off a lot of stuff and not releasing a whole lot of stuff, but it doesn't make what they're showing off any less impressive when they kind of get it right. And sometimes they do. I think the Captain Marvel looks good. The Moon Knight is kind of close. And shout out to my buddy Chris, co-host of Nerd Rage Radio, who did a lot of the diorama work. I think maybe even all the diorama work for this year's display regarding Mezco. The dude knows what he's doing. He's really become a kind of a professional, you know, which has been rewarding rewarding to see. But I think the big kind of reveal takeaway that was kind of most impressive from Esco at this display, ironically, it was Mr. Freeze. It's Mr. Freeze is a hard character to kind of really make look cool, and I think they might have done it. So congrats to them for that. NECA was there, but unfortunately, I don't think they showed off anything new regarding their Turtles line, which is a bummer. I'm, I mean, I'm still waiting for a lot of these to actually come out in the first place, so I guess it makes sense. But, you know, I'm kind of hoping that they really, you know, run full steam ahead with this line. And I think seeing a few more 
more. Would have given me a bit more confidence, but everything still looks good. Actually, had we seen the Triceraton before? I can't recall. I think maybe he's new. So that's cool. But the metal head, the leather head, shredder, we've seen all that, I believe. But the good news is they look amazing. Slash looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to this line and hoping that they can get enough steam and success behind them to kind of see it through to fruition and completion, to be quite honest. Moving on to Storm. Two big reveals. Uh, one was, well, at least from the stuff that I collect, one was their Raiden, which I'm super happy about. I've been waiting for a Raiden. I want some of these like more famous characters and not run me into the ground with all their ninjas and cyborgs. So like I've been looking forward to a Raiden. I've been looking forward to a Kung Lao. I've been looking forward to a Liu Kang and, you know, kind of the, the kind of nuts and bolts of that franchise, which I feel like they haven't really got under their belt yet. And then they also showed off their Superman figure, which has been a long time coming. They've shown off three designs so far and they've all been odd choices to me, a dark side, a Bane, and a Doomsday. But seeing one of the main characters done, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this stuff. And I heard that Storm doesn't really like to do female characters, and that bums me out a little bit because there's a lot of female characters in the Injustice game, and a lot of them have really cool character designs. So I'm kind of hoping that they are able to get a few done. I heard that Capcom put a little pressure on them to get their female characters made. And I don't think DC is the type of company that would put pressure on a toy company to make certain characters. I don't think they really care enough about what they're doing, honestly. I think they care enough to kind of sign off on this is cool or this is not cool, but not necessarily to guide them in a direction of making sure they get certain characters done. Marvel Legends. So they showed off a few things. Uh, a new Doctor Doom, which I think most people have wanted. I'm not sure if I need another Doctor Doom. Like I think I'm kind of good with the one that I have, but he does look good. It does look like a well done Doom and a gray She-Hulk, which looks pretty cool too. But the ones that I'm most happy about are the Sunspot and the Warpath. I'm just getting closer and closer to having a finished X-Force shelf. And it's like a lot of these releases now from Marvel Legends are really like zeroing in for me because it's like, yep, those are the last two I need and I'm good. So a lot of times with each release, it's like I'm just one step closer to having a complete team and uh like i'm coming down the end stretch or the, the the home stretch rather with that line and that's really a rewarding process and especially it's a little bit exciting when you're like yep bah, great to the last two i need or whatever so that's cool i mean i still need a feral but for the most part we're, we're coming down the home stretch and then they released a stanley figure which i think is a class act and it looks really good and i initially had an idea to do a new york city diorama and have kind of all my marvel legends in and, and the center was going to be a building that was kind of in disarray destroyed from the battle and stanley was be working on a typewriter on the top floor and it was the you know most of the walls were going to be gone the roof was going to be gone um it, it, ultimately that's not how my kind of display room ended up going but it's cool to see it being made and i'll probably pick one up just for funsies and uh star wars the black series we got a couple reveals from them nothing crazy though but uh, a couple reveals one is a amazon exclusive chewbacca and 3po and the 3po is going to be like uh have the ability to be disassembled and then put in a net behind chewbacca like from Empire Strikes Back, which is awesome because I almost bought another 3PO to take apart to kind of make a custom of this. And now, you know, I can save myself the trouble. So that's cool. A, a standard release Jump Trooper and uh, I think a Best Buy exclusive, IG-11, which is an interesting choice for an exclusive. I'm kind of over the exclusives. You know, the Marvel Legends and the Black Series have like diversified their exclusives so much that like I feel like I got to hit a thousand stores in order to kind of accomplish the goal. But they're also doing a loop, but we talked about that a bit in the Force Friday video. We were kind of ahead of the curve there as, as well as showing off official images of their wedge and a Force Ghost Yoda. So that's cool. A couple releases for the Vintage Collection. We got this three pack and we got Luke with double jointed elbows, which was interesting to see. Uh, as well as another Jawa and uh, this Leia from the ceremony. And she looks beautiful. It's a really well done three and three quarter figure as far as face sculpt and paint. Um, they've been recently applying that kind of digital paint to the face on the three and three quarter, which has been just mind blowing to me. Really impressive stuff, but I hope that they can see that through because I, I know the vintage collection is, is on the pricey side for, for the size of figure it is. And I don't know if it has the steam behind it, but it looks like they're, they're carrying through so far. So I'm, I'm happy to see it. We got a shadow trooper coming and a Sith trooper, which I think we all knew was coming as well as the Luke and the Yavin ceremony. So not a whole lot of reveals for Star Wars, but uh, a decent amount. And last, but certainly not least, the Transformers kind of continuation of their siege line. And they showed off a few things here. So they showed off a wheel jack. Doesn't look quite quite as impressive to me as some of the other designs they've had. It looks a little chunkier and a little less elegant than some of the kind of, I feel like, leaps and strides they've made recently in, in regards
regards to the line. Something about it seems less refined. They also showed off a cliff jumper. And that one I think actually looks pretty cool. Pretty impressive, honestly. They showed off a grapple which I think looks really well done. This looks much more in line with what they've been doing recently as opposed to the wheel jack. I feel like the wheel jack is just like a day late and a dollar short to this party. Showed off images of their star scream, which looks fine. Th that th The way the canopy looks is a little weird and I feel like the proportions of the chest versus the legs is a little strange. So this is not my favorite star scream attempt here, but I'm not sure if they've kind of got the seekers really quite right to me in, in some time. We also saw their hoist, and he looks really good, I think, for the scale and everything. I think they did a good job and kind of the, the design motif of Siege. Like it looks like he did a, uh, it looks like they really got a, a good grip on that for him. And they showed off an Optimus. This is another Optimus, I guess. So like they just run that right into the ground. Their Prime, this Prime does look good though. I have to admit, like it looks like they did a really good job on him. It's just, I wonder if we're just going to see a Prime with everything. You know what I mean? Is that going to be the wave of the future? Like look, Prime sells, Mega Prime. It's cool that he comes with the trailer though. And, and the little diorama setup they had was was pretty cool for it too so at least it took some pride in how they displayed this stuff off interesting to see and then we get some obvious repaints like the smoke screen and of course they showed off their unicron which did fund and uh we'll talk about that at some point but not today i'm kind of over it too much unicron talk Shout out to Toy Arc and to TFW 2005 that had a pretty well put together and all encompassing and conclusive kind of list and organized way of seeing all these reveals. So shout out to them and thanks to you guys, not only for listening, but for watching. Till next time. Take care.